Welcome everybody to the Finance Road Trip Podcast Part 2, The Black Wall Street Tour, also known as the Digital Financial Revolution Tour, where I toured 22 cities with Naj Roberts with the goal to educate our communities and to close the wealth gap through group economics and financial literacy. Naja Roberts and Hill Hartford partnered to create the Black Wall Street Wallet where you can both buy and sell Bitcoin, which we believe is the future of money. Make sure to follow me on all major platforms at CJ the Smart Guy and to check out www.dfrtour.com for more information on the second annual tour in 2022. Thank you. So we were leaving Shreveport, Louisiana, and originally we were supposed to go down to Jackson, Mississippi, but, um, you know, I'm from California, Naj is from California, and we started hearing about tornadoes and and some really serious weather issues, so we didn't even um, head to Jackson, Mississippi. We just went right up north to Mountain Bayou, Mississippi, uh, because we're not dealing with tornadoes. That is not in our um, history. We don't really know what to do with that that's not something we're trying to deal with. We're not trying to get tossed up in the air. So we, uh, we didn't go to Jackson, Mississippi. Sorry about that. You guys, we went up to Mount Bayou and we got there early. So when we first get there, understand that that was not planned for us to get there that early. So we were trying to find some hotels and man, when you get there, the first thing you realize is, you know, the, the financial situation, it, it was pretty run down in certain areas. And so we had trouble trying to find a hotel. And so we actually found an Airbnb. We get to this Airbnb and, you know, it's owned by this white guy, but it's like really nice. It's like huge. It's decked out. It's really, really awesome. When you go outside, the first thing I notice in Mount Bayou is the magnificent air quality. You know, I'm originally from Los Angeles and I live in Houston, Texas. The, the air quality in Los Angeles, it's literally like breathing in smog. Um, when you come to Houston, it's a little better, but not too much better in the sense where, you know, you still got lots of dirt in the air. The the humidity is pretty bad. The, it's just not necessarily clean air. But when you get to Mount Bayou, the air is clean. I'm talking clean. You just want to take deep breaths everywhere you go. And so that was the first thing I noticed. Um, I got my little workout in the first day. But this was cool because for the first time on the trip, I got to actually talk to people. We weren't driving. We weren't talking so one of the guys that came by in mount Bayou, his name is dr donald evans he is the the founder of the national african-american family union association he is a huge pro-black advocate he did an interview actually with valissa tate so valissa tate is our videographer on this entire tour i never really got to know her. i saw her when we were in Shreveport and in Houston recording, but I never got to speak with her. So here we were, we were in the Mount Bayou Airbnb and she was interviewing Dr. Evans. So you guys make sure you go ahead and check that out. Probably go on YouTube, find Valissa with a V, V A L I S S A, Tate with Dr. Donald Evans. And they basically just talked about why he's in Mount Bayou. He came to Mount Bayou because it was a relatively poor city is considered the poorest city in the entire country. So he came down there to try to help build it up. And then he talked about some of the history of Mount Bayou. So I had heard of Mount Bayou before. I had a friend named Shireen Creighton, who I'll talk about a little later in this episode. But yeah, Dr. Donald Evans talked about the history of Mount Bayou, a lot of which I did not know. So let me give you some of the history. First, Mount Bayou was created in 1887 by two former slaves of the presidency of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis. So Jefferson Davis is the, was the president of the Confederacy, and he had two former slaves, Benjamin T. Green and Isaiah T. Montgomery. And so they bought 840 acres of land in Mississippi. It was just swampland that was covered with dense, like hardwood forest. And so he bought all this land. And from the start, it was designed to be like a self-reliant, autonomous, all-black community. And for decades, Mount Bayou thrived, prospered, and it became actually very empowering for its black citizens. It was a lot of hard work. It was mostly farm work. But one thing about Mount Bayou is that it's pretty much self-sufficient in the sense that you don't really need to go to a grocery store. 
they pretty much grow everything there. The land is extremely rich. It, the soil is amazing. You know, it's the South. So, you know, they used to have lots of cotton and cash crops and things of that nature. And so the black people who own that land, they grew the same type of crops. So they said that they say actually told us that you don't have to go to the grocery store except for bananas and for flour. Everything else they grow on their own. And so cotton, all of those things were all black owned, black grown, and they were sold out. So Mount Bayou was extremely prosperous. But as times changed, cotton became less valuable. People decided to not do all the the back breaking work anymore. Um, a lot of the, the descendants of the farmers, they didn't want to farm like their parents. So they moved out. You had integration, things like that. So as time went on, it's now considered the poorest city in the country. However, when you're there, that land is so rich. I just personally think it's undervalued. I'd gone on Zillow and you can get like 1,400 square foot houses for like $60,000. The acres of land, I mean, it's really cheap. However, most of the owners of land aren't trying to sell it because they just rent it out. So most of the land, from my understanding, is still owned by black people, but they rent it out to white farmers, which is, you know, that's pretty cool. Instead of it being owned by white people, and having black sharecroppers, it seems as though a lot of the, the land is owned by black people and they lease it out to the white sharecroppers. And so this is some of the history of Mount Bayou. Dr. Donald Evans talks about it way more in depth in the interview with Velissa with the V or Velissa Tate. He also told us about different authors like Dr. Nora Shelton. He's got two books that he mostly pointed out, COVID-19 Windfall and America's Little Black Book. I personally have not read these yet. But after listening to Dr. Donald Evans, I think that I probably will. He also mentioned a book called The Pursuit of a Dream by Janet Sharp Herman. And this goes through the entire history of Mount Bayou and why it's extremely important for us to know about this. Because slaves didn't just stop being slaves and then not do anything. No, they bought land. They owned things. Mount Bayou was very self-sufficient. They pretty much had everything in the city except for a jail because they didn't really need a jail. They had everything else going on. They had banks. They had their own crops. They were very self-sufficient. And so you guys should definitely check out that interview. It was really great. After that first day, getting to know Dr. Donald Evans, getting to know Valis, you know, she's in school. She's doing the videography. She was hired by Quasi, our tour manager, as well as Naja Roberts. And so after getting to know some of them, then the next day happened because that first day, remember, we were supposed to be in Jackson. We weren't. And so then the next day we were actually supposed to head to go speak. And so we get out there to go speak and there's really not anybody there because this tour was put together so quick. And we're talking about a very, very small city. And so nobody was actually there. However, I bring it back to Shireen Creighton. I hit up one of my, my college friends and I was like, hey, I'm in your city. She had talked to me about Mount Bayou years ago, and I had never really paid too much attention, but she was very, very adamant about the history of her city. And so I hit her up and I was like, hey, we're here. And she was like, oh my goodness, why are you guys, <laughs> why are you guys in Mount Bayou? What's out there? But her grandma actually owned a restaurant out there called Madea's Restaurant. And so that was really awesome. So once I hit her up, we made that trip over there. So before we are actually heading over there, um, I actually get a text message and it's a text message saying that one of my childhood friends had just died. Um, his name was Jeremy Carpenter. Um, he was a good guy to me. He protected me from the police when they were trying to harass me. He educated me on a lot of things. So this actually, you know, this this took a, a turn of events for me in terms of like emotions, because here I am. I just, you know, figure out a place that we can go to speak that has a nice large venue where you know, people want to learn about the cryptocurrency. And then immediately afterwards, I hear about my friend passing away, which sucked. But hope Jeremy rests in peace and, you know, everything is cool. Remember, y'all, drugs are bad. Stay away from drugs. Make sure you guys give hope to people. I mean, he was a great, great person, but was going through a lot. And from my understanding, drugs were involved. And yeah, that's pretty much all I know. So back to the tour. Along this this journey... We also met with their mayor, their mayor, Eula Patterson, because we're trying to educate people on cryptocurrency, the evolution of, of money and Bitcoin. And so we talked to uh, Eula Patterson, who's the mayor of Mount Bayou. She shows us 
some of the history. We got to see some of the banks out there. There was a bank that was founded by Charles Banks. But yeah, so after the meeting with Eula, after going to the place where nobody was there, we then went to Medea's restaurant and Medea's restaurant is cracking. So you guys got to go check that out. If you're ever in Mount Bayou, make sure you go there. Their burgers are on point. The environment's really nice. And so we were over there and we actually got to meet with the former mayor of Mount Bayou as well. So there's some politics going in there. I'm not going to get any of that because none of that's my business. I've never lived in Mount Bayou, never been there for more than a couple of days. But there was another mayor out there. His name is Daryl Johnson. He's also a reverend. He's the CEO of Walk of Faith Ministries. And it was right across the street from Adia's restaurant. So we get there. He comes out. And so he starts talking to Naja Roberts. I believe elicited a, a small interview with him as well. So you guys want to make sure you check that out as well. But yeah, Mount Bayou was a really great experience. You saw the kids running around barefoot <laughs> in the grass. The, the air was clean and you could just tell like people were happy. It's very different than L.A. where everything is very, very fast paced and, you know, everybody's trying to move, make some money. Here in Mount Bayou, it was like people just spoke with each other. They enjoyed each other's company. It was very down to earth. And so it was, I'm grateful that Shireen was able to let me know where her grandmother's restaurant was at. Also got to meet up with her cousin, Ashley. Ashley's the one who actually put a lot of this stuff together because she was in Mount Bayou when it happened. So we all got our food and we all got to talk to the, the present mayor and the former mayor of Mount Bayou. And we got to check out the scenery because personally, if I ever decide to buy some farmland, I am looking in Mount Bayou, Mississippi, A, because it's cheap, B, because the soil is so rich, and in three, because it's mostly still black in that area. I don't know the quite history, but from my understanding, there was a freeway that used to go to Mount Bayou called the 278, but as opposed to like how most of the freeways get done in our country where if it's a thriving black city they put a freeway right through the city to destroy the city from my understanding they said okay we're going to move the 278 freeway away from the city so that people who are on the freeway can't just get off so instead of us taking the 278 to get to Medea's restaurant and to get to Mount Bayou we had to take a 161 which is like a just a normal street versus a freeway and so when you think about you know the history of this country and how things are affected, man, there's so many different things that go on that you're not taught in school. One thing that the former mayor of Mount Bayou, Reverend Daryl Johnson, had said was that when he was in school and he looked at the textbooks of the history of Mississippi, Mount Bayou was just one sentence big in the entire history book. And so that was one of the main reasons why he wanted to bring you know, Mount Bayou up because it was personal for him. Because it's like, man, how are you just going to have all this history and just one line in a textbook? And it makes me think back to our history um, when I was learning in California. I didn't know half of the stuff that was going on um, when it came to the 60s and, you know, the crack epidemic and the, the Black Panthers and, you know, how gangs really got started. This, the 60s to 80s in California and L.A. is like an enormous amount of history. And I didn't see any of that in the textbooks whatsoever. It was like Martin Luther King got rid of slavery or got, got rid of segregation. You know, the end. That was pretty much it. Never heard of Malcolm X. Never really heard of the Black Panthers unless it was in a, a bad light. Never heard about, you know, the crack being put into L.A. or anything of that nature. And so these textbooks, you know, they like to say his story is history and my story is a mystery. Well, that's the type of stuff that I'm trying to bridge as much as possible through this tour. So I can give you a little history lesson. I don't know all the history myself, but if I could point you in the correct directions, that's my goal. So that interview with Dr. Donald Evans should go more in depth with that. If you want to check out the history of Mountain Bayou, you want to make sure you buy that book, The Pursuit of a Dream by Janet Sharp Herman. And if you ever go out to Mountain Bayou to eat, make sure you check out Medea's Place. So I'm CJ the Smart Guy. Hopefully you guys learned something. I'm out. Deuce.